surprise announcement about that I had. So our heartfelt gratitude extends to the PNC Foundation for funding this year and previous year's Black History celebrations. Um, just in short, this year we're celebrating the work of Black photographers whose work expands and reflects our humanity. Uh, this is our third program, our opening program focused on jazz music through the rich, it's the jazz scene in Newark through Bill May's photographs. Our second program presented Newark's present through the work of four amazing Newark photographers. So that program, those two programs and possibly this one will be available on our Newark Public Library YouTube. So please, you know, check back to tune in for those and follow up if you wanna, you know, revisit this or share with others. Um, this week, we're venturing out in Newark, through Newark and outside of Newark through the lenses of Doug and Norm, Norman. Their work takes us to a variety of spaces from worlds of sports to music and, and inside the White House. They'll be discussing and sharing some of that work and so much more with us this evening. One important piece of their journey includes their collaborative work on the Katrina Project, a multi-year effort to document life in New Orleans following Hurricane Katrina. That's the basis of this short film, which will be preceding their discussion. So before we screen that, if I can get you one more time to just join me in welcoming both of our esteemed guests for the evening. All right, roll film.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you could please give it up again for uh, Douglas Adams and Norton Deshaun. Uh oh, we need to do a mic trip, mic swap. Testing, testing. The singer too. You mic swap. Here we go. Testing, testing. Okay, testing. I'm Douglas Adams Jr. I'm Norman Deshaun. So what's next? I got it. So I, I, I'm glad y'all enjoyed the video. Some that video. Because I, I know we have Adrian here, and she's an editor over here. And that video, Douglas Adams okay. put that video together yeah, on we, the. Uh, we on had a, a, a show or something in, I think, Atlanta, and I was in California, and I did that little slideshow on, my, on the plane on her way to Atlanta so we can show that in Atlanta. So. Now, all, all those pictures that you guys seen it, that was done, no flash, going in basements, um, garages, synagogue. One of the first pictures, this picture here, and what, this picture here was done in the school, and we're ready to show, show you some other, some other slides, some other pictures that we've done, and go through some other stuff. But first, I want to say I appreciate all you guys here, especially the families. So yes, yes. Showed up that surprised me, friends, especially my bright people over here, over there, <laughs> last plans. They came throughout. That's good, friends. You know I'm only joking. That's how we, and I uh, just want to say thank you to all you guys. But we're going to start this slideshow, but I got to, it's a story behind the first shot. So we were, we were, it's called Jazzland, but they switched it over to um, uh, Six, Flags. Six Flags. They changed it to Six Flags. We never knew they had a music park. Six Flags in there. We've been going for years. So this be almost our 20th year that we've been going back and forth, Coven and Katrina. So we were in there photographing. So as we're photographing, this uh, white couple comes up, a guy and a girl, they were drunk. Drunk, had beer in there. Yeah, and it was on Memorial Day in 20, what, 2019, 2018, I think we went. Yeah, Memorial Day that we went. We got a flight on Memorial Day to go there because we passed. We we never knew that it was the jazz land was there, the Six Flags. My baby sister lived like blocks from the park. And we used to go to her house all the time just to check on it because she left and she's in Houston now. But we never knew that there was the jazz land there. And when we found out, we went there on that Memorial Day. So the couple came, they came up to us. Hey guys, they were drunk. Hey guys, what, what's going on? Say hi to each one. And they going on. So where are you going? We're going up to get on the roller coaster. We're climbing up to the top, climbing to the climbing to the top. So as they're walking away, we say, okay, see you later. We're like, these crazy, you know, I, these. so I'm going to tell you what I really said. So now they going, now they up top with beer. They on the top standing on the roller coaster. Yo, hey, and we look at them like, Doug, look at these crazy white people up here on this daggone thing. Drunk, friend. you know, they up there with beer in their hands. So guy and a girl. Got right. So now the next day, so we did two days. So now we go back the next day with you. So Early we park, in the morning. We park our car on the street. Nobody bothered us. We're out there shooting. So I go to Doug. <sighs> Got to go up the roller coaster. He's like, what? So he's, so I'm going towards the roller coaster. I'm going there, going through the woods. So I hear a noise and didn't realize the noise. So I'm like, I'm good. I got my cameras. I'm protected. Don't believe that. So the noise I heard, I'll tell you about it later. So now I climb up. This is where he's filming me. Hit it, Doug. All right, here we go. So I climb up, and that's me on top. <laughs> yeah. He was yelling, I guess, yelling, yelling at me. I'm on the bank of this levee. Here you go.
he, I was on the bank of the levee and I'm, I mean, I'm shooting across. I call, I call him on the phone. I'm squat down because at this time now it's the next day, it's not a holiday. They have all security and everything. What they doing, they was filming Jurassic World there. Jurassic Park or Jurassic World. So they was filming. So I had to go up and I'm squatting. I'm down like, yo, Doug. And I'm on the phone. You see me up? Get the shot, man. Because I had to climb up and squat all the way as I'm going up. So now as I get up there, he's filming me. And he's and when I'm calling them other people, he's calling me. Look at this crazy. <laughs> I'm up there. But what I had, I had to get the shot. That's the shot. So that's the shot, but if you look way back, way back, that's where they were filming Jurassic World. But all the security was around. This is what I got coming down. I'm still up, but I have so many. This is just one, so we're not gonna, yeah, so that's the shot from that. I had to get that. So people think I'm crazy, but hey, you gotta get the shot, you gotta get the shot. So, so after that, I come down, that's when all the security came. Hey guys, you're not supposed to be in. What? Really? So I was already down already. But as we're shooting, it's a part, it's, it's in one of our pictures, I think. Behind us, you had seven alligators. Oh, yeah. So, so it was a lake, a, a little lake. Like. Yeah, yeah. And um, I just started seeing heads pop up. <laughs> yeah. there's, there's there, and this is why I said, when I said I heard something in the woods, that's what it was. It was the alligator. And I'm like, Looking, I'm like, you know, people over here. So that that is our trip up to there. So we're gonna go through some other stuff here. Here we go. Now that that's young lady Doug know, but that picture there, this here is the first going in. It's a school that's across the street. So I went in. Now you gotta mind you, there's no lights, there's nothing out there. So we under I'm climbing through, and all of a sudden I hear Doug talking. I'm like, is he getting robbed by somebody? Because there's nobody out there, there's nobody on the street. Your mic. He was scared. Tell the truth. I was like, I got it. <laughs> got to get the shot. We go. So, so this lady. So we were there. That was the very first time. Two thousand six. We went. Hurricane was two thousand five. Two thousand six. And she was the only one on the block that she stayed while everybody else left. This picture here is from 2019 when we went. This is from 2019. And she's the only, yeah, she had a little knife or something. Oh yeah, there, there it is, yeah, yeah. She was cutting weeds like the, yeah. Yeah, she was cutting. She was cutting the grass. We're like, what are you doing? She had a cane sitting in the chair. What are you doing? I said, oh, I'm cutting the grass, son. And she yapped us. Kept talking. Them. Kept talking. But yeah. she was on something. She was... Yeah, she's, uh, there's a documentary on her because she was fixing the house up. Uh, her and I think a son or something, but he wouldn't leave. I mean, she wouldn't leave. Now, now where she is, where the water came in, is 20 feet. So I was at school, the water was up to the next level. So you mm -hmm. the so she's, she's the only one, maybe three, four blocks. Nobody's on, nobody's across the street, nobody's around. Yeah. I'm like, how do you stay here? She's like, I'm good. You've been here so long. Okay, okay. you can talk to her. Okay, that's uh, Robert Green. This guy here. His mother and his granddaughter had been missing, you know, during the uh, during the storm, and I think he found them a couple of days later in a tree down the block, and um, they were in a tree. They both were deceased. Every year they have a a memorial. They have a march, uh, like a second line or whatever, from his house 
to the tree where um, the mother was found in the tree and his and his mother. And he's a big activist in New Orleans uh, right now. He got he's got one of the new homes that Brad Pitt um, built in the Lower Ninth Ward. Doug had the red. That's when we used to look cute. We had the dreads and all that stuff. Yeah. So you see me in front and see Brad Pitt. So we're talking to him about our project. And then TMZ comes through. Hey, because there was two girls there that did bad. Hey, Brad Pitt, were you good in math? Yeah. Yeah, that's on TMZ. You can still see that on TMZ. But when he came down, when they saw him, when the girls saw him, they were riding with us. We were showing them around. They said, I'm driving. Stop. That's Brad Pitt. It's Brad Pitt. He was up doing an interview with somebody from Channel 4. He said, wait a minute, I'll come down after the interview. After the interview, he came down. And when he came down, all of a sudden, we paparazzi jumped out of trees, uh, from behind cars, everything. So what Brad Pitt did, he took the girls, they were facing the street. He took the girls, turned them the other way. So they're facing the house. He told us to come on this side and we took the shot to them. And they had a shot on the cover of People magazine. Of the two girls, they're teachers from, yeah. Yeah. So this shot here, this is what a lot of people spray help on the bills, on the house, on the roof, everything. This is great. I took this shot because I'm sitting here thinking, this thing right here, this thing is for all this according to the water. I think everything in the room is under water. They found a way. Second year. Yeah. That might have been the first year. This shot here, actually, little film. Um, this is up where top is where they did the baptism, up with the glass. Yeah, it's a church. So this is the church. So the way you see the the chairs, it's 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 funny because the water came in saying this way, but somehow it turned all the fuse from that way. I was up top shooting. The others where that light is at the bottom. So mm -hmm. I'm up there. With, Photograph. And all of a sudden I get, ah, ah, ah. Okay, Doug, it's okay. Packed up. <laughs> we were out of there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Time to go. We packed stuff up, got in the car, went on to another church. So here, so here this is Doug. So if you see Doug was shot, that means I shot Doug. <laughs> this stuff here, lower yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. We used to come out of out of basements and we'd see young guys riding by four or five deep in cars and um sitting low and looking at us, but never bothered us. We were covered. Where this picture is, this is a Judah Jameson um, office, office, the artistic director for Alvin Nelly. She bought these from us. Yeah. 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 A few months later, I saw her at the White House and I asked her what she did with those pictures. I told her I'm one of the photographers that you bought the images from. And where did you, what did you do with the pictures? She said, they're in my bedroom and I look at them every morning when I wake up. Right here, 
Yeah, we keep switching. We keep switching. Yeah. All right, so we switch off to some stuff. I, I have to show this because these shots here is what I, so we're going to go from stuff to switch different things in our lives. With, with, this here is, is hockey where I work, I work now with MSG Network. And this shot here was shown on the post game, pre game, post, post game. All right, all right, boss, relax. So this shot, this shot, this shot, I'll go back to that one because I like that. Because if you look at the shot, look where the puck is. So I have a camera mounted up top. It is coming down. So here, so I, I, I do stuff with hockey. You have to look, where's the puck? It's on the stick. So that's, that's what I'm usually looking at here. So all, all these shots were, were done here. I had to shoot him. When PJ, when he came, he's one of the, not the first black, probably the, he's one of the black hockey. He's not there anymore. But I talked with Adrian, I said, hey, I want to, I want to go, I got to go shoot him. I probably shot 5,000 pitchers. 300 was him. 3,000 was this guy right here because he's the only black there. So I shot him and shot him. So all these shots that you just seen up, I, I was only shooting maybe a couple of months. Not even a couple of months, a couple of shots. So, but what happened, so... So well, I had talked with Adrian. That's why Adrian's there. I had talked with Adrian. I said, uh, I said, Adrian, I want to shoot hockey. So she probably was on the phone like, you want to shoot hockey? Yeah, I want to shoot hockey. So she said, all right, come on down. So I go down, I shoot it. I didn't do that many shots. So a couple of weeks later, she said, hey, they want to hire you. And now I, I wasn't even shooting hockey because the first time I went, she was mad at me. How come you didn't go on the floor and shoot down on the ice? You're only shooting through a hole this big. And I said, I went down a minute and I went up top. So what I did, I went up top and I watched one, two, three, all three holes. They had six people. So I watched the photographers. I'm zooming on them, shooting, zooming on them. Went back the following week, did what I had to do. So all this stuff here she uses for uh, MSG, for the, the network. So now she called me up. Hey, what's going on? Nothing. Uh, you better get your speech ready. Get my speech ready. What I need a speech. I thought somebody passed. I'm like, somebody died. Get your speech ready. Speech for what? Um, we're up for an ESPY award. You're on the list. And I've only been shooting. <laughs> Don't clap for me. Clap for her because it wasn't for her. I would. <laughs> <laughs> so when she told me that, I mean, I, I, I'm getting speeches ready. So I was on the list. And a lot of people don't know for that SP award. It almost came. We almost got it. So I would have got it for the pictures that they were showing. I think she would have got it for the editor that was showing. Her boss get it for uh, producing the show. So we were close. I ain't had no speech ready. I was like, clean. Give me. <laughs> so that, that's why this hockey is being shown because that, that's why I love hockey because that's the only time I had a chance for the SP award. But I have to say thank you to you. Without you, none of this is none of this. So I would have got a picture. I would have got a hockey picture blown up for you. I would have got a hockey picture blown up for you, but I seen your house. You ain't got no hockey stuff up in there. You wouldn't have put it up. But hold up. You you wouldn't have put it up. I know that. So what I real quick, real quick, real quick. So what I did, this is for you. This is one of my shots from Kenya when I went with Roy Jones Jr. to shoot at Kenya. This is my shot from Kenya when I hang out with the Maasai tribe for a week. So this is for you. So I say I love you. I appreciate you. Know that she was over there. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Now she's editor. She say it again. Multi, multi uh, editor, award winner. I seen her award on the thing. I got it. She was over there trying to play low key. Well, you could blow her. I know you her friend. You don't never come to the dinners no more. But you her friend. All right. All right. Here we go. This is this shot here. 
I shoot boxing. I'm Roy, I'm Roy Jones Jr. photographer for the last 20 years. Real quick, this is this shot here. They would not let me do it in the back. They said, no, no, you can't shoot Muhammad Ali in the back with Roy. I'm like, okay. So his daughter was fighting then. So when he came out, the guy tapped me. I had three seconds to shoot this shot, and I probably shot 10 of this shot, and nobody else probably had that shot right now. But I didn't show none of the boxing. Y'all need to see that. There you go. Here, here, here. Push this forward. Forward. Yeah, yeah. Yo, man, y'all can get that on these nerves. Yo. Okay. Here we go. All right. This is one of my shots from, uh, uh, it's got to be JFK, maybe Newark Airport. And as everybody knows, President Obama, he's got a swag. He, he Yeah. And um, I caught this shot. And there's actually Secret Service agents around him, but I cropped them out. You can see their shadows, but um, I cropped the shot and just had him walking. Next. Okay, this was a turkey pardon, one of the years when the girls were a lot younger and um, I used to put in for these and um, used to go watch him pardon the turkey the day before Thanksgiving. Um, Oval Office shot. Um, I had three, three times that I actually snuck into the Oval Office for these shots. Now, when there's a, uh, like a state dinner for world leaders, they come in and they have a big ceremony on the South Lawn, we catch all that stuff. They had the review of all the military. After that, they have a meeting in the Oval Office. And normally those shots are for the pool, the White, Ho the White House press pool. Those are the press who work there every single day. Me, I've been a mailman. April, God willing, will be 40 years. I spent seven years at the Obama White House as a press photographer and did my job at the same time. Catching, going to New York to catch the mega bus sometimes, and my wife can tell you one o'clock in the morning, I'm getting up to catch a three o'clock bus to get to DC to get in the White House. But I had another, there were a lot of times, now this is about media. There were a lot of times that I was there and I was the only black photographer. I started shooting there in 2009, 2010. I was the only black photographer a lot of times. There, was, there were black video guys, but a lot of times I was the only black photographer. So this is the very first time I snuck into the, the Oval Office for the shot. And what happens is you're going by the press secretaries and this guy, he knew that I didn't belong there, but he let me go. I was so nervous. I had on a floppy hat because the South Lawn, it was hot on that day. And I had a floppy hat on to keep the sun out. I'm moving around, pushing around, and the girl, she was like, she had a video camera. She's like, wait a minute, I'll let you get your shot. So she moved, I got my shot, and he looked at me like, my man, take the hat off. <laughs> and I realized <laughs> that I had the hat on, and I took it off. But that was one of three times that I actually snuck in the the Oval Office for these meetings. The British Prime Minister, David Cameron at the time, I was in there with the Italian president and the Italian Prime Minister three different times. This is his shot right. when we were in Selts. This, this shot here, we were in Selma. I'm a White House press too, but Doug got me into that. He called me up, hey, I'm going to do something at the White House. Ah, I got to work. Y'all you, you know, I've been doing 28 years. I'm a construction worker. 
That's my buddy. I wanted to, I wanted to catch history. <laughs> so he's like, hey, I'm going to go shoot. All right, I got to work. And then I said, no, what comes? So this is where we went to Selma. So this day, I went to Charlotte first to shoot a Roy fight. I'm driving. Went to Charlotte, then went, drove to Selma. So back and forth, it was 30 hours I rode by myself. But this shot here, and everybody look at it and really look at it. So that, think of your wives. And that, but what she did in this shot, and a lot of people might not have the shot, she took his hand and went this fast and let go. One second, she touched his hand. But I was watching her at the whole time. I'm watching this. I'm looking. I'm looking. Click. I only person that might have this shot is his personal photographer. Nobody else had that shot because it went that. If they do, I haven't seen it yet. So that's how fast this. Because I'm always watching and looking, and I'm fast with the camera anyway. So yeah. Oh, yours. Yes, he is. Okay, this is the Easter egg roll. I used to go to the Easter egg roll every year, and. Somehow, some way, the spot where I stood by the fence, he always made his way over to me. Hey, what's up, man? And shook my hand. This time, I kept shooting, kept shooting till he got right up on me. I never got the shot with him, but we're not, we're not, we're not dead out to be yeah, celebrities. We're not, I, we've been around so many celebrities, and I don't yeah. have but only a couple of shots with with people. Yeah, but that's so not what I'm not, there for. I'm there yeah. to get, get the shot. Yeah, so this was it was good enough for me. But I would have took that shot. I would have took that <laughs> shot. With this is one of my favorite shots. This was another um, state dinner or something at the White House, and we were all on the South Lawn, and um, I had a long lens. And when they came out the door, the South Portico, there they call that. And um, I just caught them whispering. I caught them whispering in the, in her ear, like you know. But that that's the thing about with photography, you have to always be looking. Some of us now with the digital cameras, yeah. even I get caught up. You look at it, yeah. you're looking at your shot. But if you keep your eye on the prize, what you need to do, you have to yeah. always keep looking. What's going to go on? Something is going to happen. Yeah. To catch that shot. Yeah. So I have shots that people are like, how you get that shot? Because I'm always look. I can look here. I can be in a place. I look over there. You can click up. Yeah, I'll look and I, you got to catch that shot no matter what. Oh, OK. Yeah, it is. OK, this was uh, I've been to plenty of these. The Medal of Honor. No, the Medal of Freedom, Medal of Freedom, which the president, they pick people to receive this Medal of Freedom. This one was uh, Stevie Wonder. I've, I've seen so many of these. Yeah. OK, this was Right here in the great city of Newark, the very first time, well, yeah, my first time catching her, the first lady, she came to Chancellor Avenue, I think it was Chancellor Avenue School. And um, this one event, I happened to be the only black photographer there. And at this event, I even put it on my Facebook page, I think, because I used to leave little messages. All the white photographers were over in the corner, you know, lollygagging, talking and stuff. And I'm over there by myself. Many, many, many times, many times that's happened. This is another state visit with the German chancellor at the time. Uh, this is on the South Lawn. What else here? This was one of the ending, you know, one of the of last years, like 2015, I think. The first lady, she has a garden, and every year she has children from elementary schools come out and they harvest the garden. And he surprised her, came up, and um, I caught them in the hug. I always wanted to catch this. This is the only time I caught a bill signing, signing a bill in the East Room of the White House. Uh, this is the portrait reveal of the Bushes, you know. Um, okay, this, this shot here, we were in the Rose Garden, all the photographers, and like he says, everybody put their cameras down. And I kept on shooting, and I caught this shot of 
him getting uh, someone helping him put his jacket on. But he, it's like he's looking right at me. Aren't you the guy that I shake his hand every Easter egg roll? <laughs> this was another Oval Office with the Italian prime, uh, the Italian president. What you got here? Click it down. Oh, okay. Uh, this was one of the years that the Miami Heat uh, won the championship and they were honored by the president. Yeah, they were. That's a nice shot, know. Doug. Who shot yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They were telling a joke about Hillary or something. I don't. I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> okay, this was one of my favorite, yeah, yeah. all-time favorite shots because I caught the very the first president and the first black president. And because his arm was extended, um, this is Same. one of my, I love this shot. This one there, there's his main photographer, See Pete Souza there. This was the second inauguration. And at that time, it, you know, it was, it's cold during the inauguration. So I didn't want to go on the parade route, uh, none of that stuff. So we get emails that tell us everything that goes on. I knew that they were going to church. So I said, I'm going to hang out in the press room. I hung out in the press room. When they came back, um, the press was notified. So the pool press, they're the ones that get these shots. They had a, a riser right in front of the, uh, the White House. So there were only about 10 of us. They called me to come with them, and I was not a, uh, a pool photographer. Got on the riser. This is another one. Everybody put their cameras down, and I kept shooting. And I just love the colors, and I truly believe this is the only shot in the world that, um, that I got of them walking in. And, of course, he got them on the other side. Okay, this guy right here, this was my very first time at the White House. And John, he was the press guy for the New York, New Jersey, Sky Blue, women's professional soccer team. When they won the championship in 09, he, let, he wanted all the press to go. We had to send in our information. This was my first time there. After that time, I called the White House press office, asked me to put them on their press list, and they did. I'm a hustler. I've always been a hustler. I made my own press IDs. I made my own press credentials and used to get in, walk in the White House just like. That, that's because he got it from me when I tell him. <laughs> just when you like, go places. That's right. That's when you, right. When you go places, that's act right. like you know. I walk in that's places. Right. Like, act like, like you belong when there. I, when I walk in, hey, man, how you doing? They're like, how you doing? I'm like, I got caught up. One time we were shooting a press conference with Roy yeah. Jones. Roy Jones. Like, he just said, stay with me. Stay, stay with me. With me. Back with we're walking in. B.B. King's. Yep. Right. Everybody gets in and they stop me. And I'm like, and I had to wait for him to get. After that, I learned my lesson. Act like you know. Everywhere I, I go, photographers, when you, you act like you belong there. Like you know. And trust me, I, I done been in places. This, walk. this was my very first shot. This is when he was uh, still a senator in 2008. Um, and I think we were at the Meadowlands. Uh, the Brent, well, it was the Brendan Byrne Arena, I think. Then I was on the floor below the podium. He was on the stage, and this is like my very first shot of him. The best shot that I I, I love this shot. I think that may be it. Okay, right, okay this that shot one is here, yours. This here went to New York and caught. Him. This is the last time they flew on that plane, the helicopter. This is the last shot. 
that they came to JFK. This was where it was done. JFK, I'm on the other side. I mean, when they came back, it was only two, me and another brother out there. But when they came, I was sitting there like, I said, yell and say, come take a picture with us, right? And I'm like, nah, we get in trouble. Then I, then I thought about it again. If I got in trouble, it didn't matter because he wasn't going to be in the White House anymore. So <laughs> it didn't matter. Click that I, click so this shot here is the last time, the last wave is right here. That's the last time they were in there. Now, now, if you look in this shot, is a brother, is a brother sitting in between. Right now, right, right now, he's the vice president um, photographer, personal mm -hmm. photographer. Mm -hmm. And I said that to him. He thought it was some span, like somebody put him in there. Some no, man. All right, now we go, we switch we off. This is some. Mm. All right, this shot, this shot here, Queen Latifah. A lot of y'all know this is who I work for. I've been working for her now for 20 years, but I started working with her mother. That's why I started, with jubilation. And then I started working with her. This shot here, so now, when I'm most of the time when I shoot, I'm the personal photographer. So if you see all the photographers there, I caught her when she first came in. So when she first came in, I already got my, my uh, red carpet shot. So I went around where I didn't have, they couldn't go where I go, because I, I followed her through the whole thing. So this shot, I just show like, but look, look all the photographers. No, no, y'all ain't really looking. They all white. Guess who the brother came, walked right past and just came through. I just walked right by him. Come get this shot. I said, I gotta have this shot because there's not too many brothers that's, that even get that close in there. Real quick, this is at the MT Awards, the m &As. I shot this, but it's probably, I had like four cameras set up on a remote going around. One zoom, one wide angle. So I'm catching it, but I was, I was in the back because she came in on a motorcycle. If you see the thing, she came on a motorcycle first. So I was in the back and I had to run all the way back around, but I didn't run that far. I hit the remote. That was it. This is what her, one of the last shots. Tretch, all of them, Nork in the house. And that here, I love this shot. I have so many of these shots. This shot is at the Kennedy Center in Washington. This shot here, I'm probably up in the ceiling when I got this shot, then came down. But I like the shot at the Kennedy Center because I was right underneath where Obama and them sit, where the president sit, where they come to the Kennedy Center. And back then, it wasn't too many us as photographers in the Kennedy Center shooting. It, that wasn't happening. All right, now we switch it up. This, this is one of our scenes we're going into where it's uh, uh, media, where Black Lives Matter. So this is in East Orange. So I shot this with the drone. This is a drone shot. And then I did another shot, came at night. So I like to do night stuff. So I shot this straight down, Black Lives Matter. But each letter, what I did, I went over top of each letter. And I took it out, cleaned it up, and I gave it. They, I, well, I had uh, Linda. Linda gave each letter, because each letter was done separate, separate artists. So I gave each letter to each person. So I took it out of Black Lives Matter. So they have their own letters from that. That's right in East Orange. All my East Orange people in here, some of them snuck out. Even the mayor. Oh, the mayor. Oh, <laughs> got the mayor here, East Orange, Ted Green. That's our family, friend, brother. On the. Oh, yeah, this is one of my shots in Brooklyn. Uh, I go to marches, rallies all the time. And. Um, This was in Brooklyn at the Barclay Center. Okay, this is another one, a uh, protest. There we go. Okay, there's another one. This is in Brooklyn. This one when we lay down, right out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this one was in Harlem. This one was uptown. We marched from 116th to 47th, the United, the United Nations. I marched with, I had tore my Achilles. I had a boot on my foot and um, they were calling me a soldier. I'm an Air Force veteran, but uh, yeah, they called me a soldier. Another one of my rallies. This is another shot from that same rally. Yeah. That's the Q. Who's that day? Q. The Alphas. Alphas. Yeah. I don't know. Y'all know I ain't with the, <laughs> I wouldn't have pledged anyway. I Okay, <laughs> and this is that same in color, you know, I did it 
I was at the top of the hill. I don't know. Erskine, what street is that? You, I know. And 116th, yeah, yeah, yeah. On the top of the hill there. That is clicker. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this now, is now I, I, yeah. I do I like night photography. My wife will tell you I'll get up sometime one o'clock in the morning and just feel like shooting and I go out and this is mostly our landscaper shot. So most of it's mm -hmm. shot most of it's done at night. This is this, this shot right here. It looks like he's yeah. really looking. Somebody just sitting there looking. That's a north. Yeah. Yeah. That's a statue. This here, I shot this with the drone. George Washington Bridge. Mm -hmm. So I usually go out day, night. This is in the day. This is Newark City Hall at night. That's East this Orange. Is, this is East Orange, City Hall, East Orange. See it on the side, the rail tracks that's going down. That's, that was, it was, it, matter of fact, it was raining that day when mm -hmm. I flew up, but I just had to get that shot. And it's East Orange, so I'm from East Orange. My, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm all over. That's what for. So this shot drone, this shot is Bell Stadium that was over here. They tore they tore it down where yeah. most of y'all was supposed to park. That's where the stadium is. Yeah. Bish, so that's the last. It's probably one of the last shots of it because it's not there anymore. So yeah. now that shot became a history shot. And Plaz, you shoot too. Plaz, that's that's my buddy there. Okay. That there, okay. that's where the sword. A lot of people don't know that sword in the middle there. It's, it's middle in a military park, but I shot with a drone coming coming down the street. So you have potential. This is at night. This is probably one o'clock in the morning. I'm always both was out late. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one here. This is another one of mine. I want the light streaks uh, in the center of Broad Street, across from City Hall, and shooting the other. So way. he's going the opposite way that I went. Here with Seaside Heights. Because this is after the storm, Sandy. So a lot of these pictures we have here have some kind of meeting. That's okay. that that picture there from the storm. Because on Sandy, real quick, on Sandy, I put out for everybody, anybody who wanted a free wedding. So it was a five hundred dollar, five thousand, no five. I'm sorry, five thousand dollar package for anybody. Three. So three people came. So I did three weddings for five thousand. Two photographers, two videos, but one of them was from Sandy, Sandy Hook. So it was nice. So that's why I had my little Sandy Hook in there. I mean, Cesar Heights, Sandy Hook. Y'all know, y'all see it. All right. Okay, this is our other Louisiana thing. We, we saw a video on um, YouTube. I saw a video and all I have to do is let him know and we're gone. We were out. Um, Dude, this Laurel Valley, it's a plantation and Thibodeau, Louisiana. It is the largest still standing plantation in America. And there were and 60, it's one of the most 60. haunted yeah. plantations. They said you, you'll walk by and you'll see people moving in the trees. That yeah. it's one we of were allowed to, well, the first day we went there, the plantation owner happened to be there and we talked to him. We told him we were press from New Jersey. Sure, we gonna hook you up. We gonna put stuff in the paper. Yeah. He allowed us two days, which they never, they never did it before. Allowed us two days on, the, on property. the property, but we had to sign waivers because of rattlesnakes, red ants, and alligators. The alligators. Well, even when we first went there, we drove. The guy said, "You go down the street. It's a house there." That's where the security is. So he's sitting there with a shotgun. Anybody come on that property, he had a shot. So I told Doug, come on, we gonna set him riding all around. We going to the house. So I went to the house, ring the door. He's like, oh guys, whatever y'all want to do, go up to the house. You see the manager up there? He let us do whatever we wanted to do. Yeah. Yep. Whatever we wanted to do. Yeah. Well, no, it's not a museum. No, it's not. They've no. got a general store like on the corner of that road. There's like a general store there, but uh that's good you asked. Anybody want to ask questions? They're doing, going, please. They're doing tours says. now, though. They are doing tours now. Right, right, they're doing tours of it now. You Only certain things. But we're the only ones that have pictures inside. There is no other pictures of inside of them. But we didn't The fence was so low, though, that you can shoot from over the right, fence. Shoot. But we didn't but touch we, anything. I didn't want to go in it. 
because the vibe, the spirit, the, I mean, it was so. Yes, spooky. I was now I was covered in the blood, but I wasn't trying to touch their blood. <laughs> I stayed. I stayed out shooting for little holes. <laughs> we. Oh, acres. It's seven thousand. I think it was seven thousand acres. Seven, yeah. It started out as a, a cotton, and then it went into um, sugar cane. The sugar cane. So yeah. this is a shot I did with the drone. So I covered. Huh. This was a mill that got destroyed. Uh, uh, Hurricane Betsy, I think in 65, 62, something like but that. Now they got a wire fence, but now since they're doing a the tour, they got a wooden fence going around. So we're going to go back there again. So now they got the yeah, wire fence. the barbed wire fence in the house. This is, this is a regular road. You can drive down this, this road there. And you yeah, you can drive down to see it, see, see them all. Do it. You just can't go on the, on the, well, with the tour, you can probably go. Yeah, they've got a tour going on now, but this is that. See, just in case y'all think we lying, you see the picture right there. <laughs> Drone shot. This is the outhouse. That's the outhouse over there. So we should have some. This, this was this the next morning, sunrise. That's a dub. Yeah. We got to catch the sunrise on this. So we flying to get there. Then I see on some property the fog. So I'm yeah. driving even faster because I want this shot with this fog coming up. Yeah. And I'm scaring the hell out of Doug because the way I drive, he yeah. was like, oh, okay. We will get there uh, flying, yeah. but to get this shot here. That's these you see the outhouse there, these are all like toilets. These are all is, without all the is, outhouses, the wood around them. All there's a the hole wood. in the ground. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's us. That's another sunrise shot. This is inside one inside of inside one of the Cabins, yeah. There's a that that is it's the outhouse. outhouse. Yeah. Doug, come yeah. A little bit, yeah. Come over. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We can get. We got other seats, you know, too, man. We can move you another seat. Yeah. Get the usher, usher, can you the move the old seat truck that was sitting out there? Uh, Keeps it up, right? This shot here, I did with the drone. This only shows. A little bit of the only place they wouldn't let us go. We can go anywhere. We want. Don't Except go to the big the house. Big house. Not go to the, the big, big house. house. Yeah. So we ain't go to the big house. But they let us do this here. This used to be a school or a church. Mm -hmm. And in here, they filmed the movie Ray. Yeah. The movie Ray was filmed in yeah. that place in there. So mm -hmm. they. So then it had to be. What was it, a club they had it when he when he did the church? Right. This is inside. inside. If you look some of the old movies on Slave, you'll see inside and it looks just the same. Just the same. Just about the now, some of these shots might look double or the same, but what we figured out, what I have to say with Doug, that whatever he shoot, whatever I shoot, we might shoot the same. And I told him one time, yeah, the fire had, how old was these fire? Doug, yeah, how they, old? yeah fire, I had to look it up to see when fire hydrants were invented if they were in does this was since 1865 uh fire hydrants eight they've been around since 1801 1801 this is inside yeah 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 okay we got it. i think uh, we, this is about it right Do, i think i'm always shooting doug all right this shot real here real, go back doug real. This shot here shows the other half of the acres that go out this way, mm -hmm. but this is all of them. But if you look in that corner way over here, that's the, that's, that's, the, the, that's the big house. Yeah. But they didn't want us to go over there. So I said, well, I'll shoot it from the air. Yeah. So <laughs> can't, can't, yeah, I didn't you want can to, see all the all the cabins there. This is, it's, it's like 60 of them still around. It used to be 100 or something, I think it's 60. Quarters, yeah. So now we go back and we have to see what uh, that there. That's for oh, this next is for week. the next one. Okay. Yeah, yes, sir. All right. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Well, make it your mic ready. Mic check. Mic check. Yeah. Uh, please give please give these two brothers another hand. Wow. Thank you. 
First of all, that, that was like 99 photos that they just sped through and that just was like seamlessly just went through. So appreciate y'all. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. 107%. So I do want to um, maybe have some space for some questions, but very important announcement. Well, two quick announcements, please. If you get a chance, this is our final program for next Thursday. Uh, Wendell White and Linda Shockley both doing amazing work in South Jersey, preserving, taking pictures of um, Black rural town spaces that maybe a lot of us aren't aware of, haven't heard of. So if you have time, reception, five o'clock, program six o'clock. Another very important announcement is for anyone who is parked in the garage, that space closes at 8.15. You still have some time at 7.50, but I'm just saying if you got your car there, 8.15, unless you plan on sleeping and chilling there, You'll, you'll want to move it That's by right, then. You know but with that said, we want to kind of move along, get to some questions. Um, there you so go, please. My oh, stand up. We can't hear right. um, Incredible job. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you for coming tonight because I learned a lot, an incredible lot of information. Um, two things I want to ask. Were they, did they allow you? Is there a burial ground at the plantation? We, we didn't see no burial ground. Uh, and secondly, um, you mentioned about being a few photographers of color right. at these events. How were you treated by the other photographers? Well, I, when I went first did the, the hockey or other places, I've been a lot of places with Roy and I'm the, but when I usually come, so I'm shooting for that person. So I don't, you know, I don't, I don't stress them, but they treat you like you're nothing, you know? So I, I could be sitting here and they all over there. But what I do, because I don't like the body treatment, I'll go, hey, guys, how you doing? And one don't speak, I go, I don't do that. Doug, are like, he's not going to do it. But I make sure they treat us the way we were treated. And this is why when I when we come in, the certain equipment I use, it's the same as yours. If I don't, you treat the same. Keith can tell you the same. Keith shoots. That's Keith's photographer. Will's a photographer. Another get treated like you're the second. But I already know who I am, so I don't worry about that, because I get my shot. <laughs> Yes, sir, my brother. Why are you trying to tell my old stuff, man? So my, my, um, my question to you is, what inspired you? To, what is what? What inspired you to become a photographer? OK, when I first started, it was whew, almost now, probably 40 years ago. And what I did, I, I was just doing the black and white. And then what really inspired me is Dave's brother. That's my brother, the Dave's brother. What happened, he had a wedding. So I just started picking the camera up and shooting. And then as I'm shooting, he had, they had a photographer there. So they got the stuff back, but I'm at the wedding. Sean ain't got no film and I'm just shooting. He don't have no film. My pictures came back better than what the photographer was shooting. So that, after that, that inspired me. And what really inspired me, I was working with another guy doing weddings and I got tired of loading his camera for him because I was the helper. Load the camera. And these was doing Hasselblad. So you had to load the strip. Hasselblad is the uh, older camera you had to look through. And I got tired of doing that. I said, I'm not shooting for you to work or working. I do my own thing. So that's what, you know, inspired me to get out, do my own thing. And I love catching the essence of people's faces when I shoot them. It's always, I love that and love the joy from people on that. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. May I help you? <laughs> hey, Dale. Thank you so much. Um, Two friends of mine from way back, East Orange in the house, Illtown represent. Um, can you tell me a little bit about safety when you're shooting, safety of your equipment, and um, when you're moving around, um, how you keep yourself and your things safe? Thank well, you. It, it, it depends on where you're at. Like uh, quickly, at, like at the, White, at the White House, they always have a preset where you come in, you get there earlier than the event and you set up your equipment in a spot and nobody's going to touch that spot. Now, I'm not doing that in the hood uh, where I go to any of these rallies or anything like that, but there you got a spot and that's your spot, whether you are a uh, pool press or regular guy like me. So, But I've been in some of the worst places, so... I always keep, when, when I bring my cameras out, they stay with me. Mm -hmm. You'll never see me go back to the car and put something in, and these guys know you do not, if you carry it, it stays with you. 
And if I have it on me, I usually I used to have it on neck. I don't carry it on my neck. I usually have my camera. If I have a strap, it's strapped around my head. So if somebody hit it or drop it, it stays on there. But the best thing for security, get insurance. Your photographers out here, you got to have insured insurance on your equipment. Your equipment has got to be insured. My my equipment is insured. Land, land, sea, fire is insured for everything. Homeowner insurance is not going to cover every little thing. My yes, name. Yes, ma'am. May I help you, ma'am? <laughs> this is one of my cousins. Hey, cuz. Yeah. <laughs> work that I, um, I've been around you since you were born, yep. but I just want to say that extraordinary, extraordinary work that you guys do, have any of you ever thought about, you, you've always said about you guys were really the black the guys in the room, teaching our younger youth, going out into the community and teaching a younger group well, that, about photography. Right, I do that a lot, teaching a lot of kids. I, I, I teach them, I show them. I just, a friend of mine has have her nephew just came here, brother right here. She said, I, I want you to teach, but how I teach, you have to come to the job with me. I don't sit in the class. You come, bring your camera. I'll show you. You learn and it's faster. That's how I learn. It's faster. I see you. I shoot it. That's how I learn fast. The fastest way, come out. You, you hear me talking to you, my young brother? Like, knowledge, wave, see if you're still alive. Burp or something, <laughs> right? So, yes, ma'am. So, you guys have documented many a thing. Has anybody ever approached you about your story? Because you're going from construction worker and um, mail carrier yeah. to White House. Yeah. There's a story to be told. Yeah, right. Yeah. They, we've been on. Uh, yeah, we've been on. We've been on Channel Nine News. We was on there. Some yeah. other people reached out. We've been to Charlotte. I for for what what I'm doing for as a photographer. I was in the Essen magazine. With Jill Scott on the front, I was in the Essence magazine, so it's talking about it's, it's um side hustle, so it's talking about me having a job and my side hustle is photography, so I'm in the magazine. So people are, you know, they they put us in, and how I got in there, the young brother right here, brother Dave, got me in that that uh the side hustle in the magazine. Yeah, and my um my job, my national union, I'm a union rep of letter carriers and my national union, they did a three page story on me in 2019. Yeah, they did, yeah. But if you have somebody want to do a story on us, miss uh, my friend next to you, you know, that's my friend. Okay, give it to my, I'm supporting her. I see, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, now what, what, what? Fox, Fox, give it a mic, give it a mic, let it, yeah, Steve. You better give CNN a mic. What are you trying to do? I, I think it's important to call out huh? all of our African American legends because it's important during this time of the year, first of all. Oh, and I think that it's really very important to recognize people who, for example, in media, who have made certain accomplishments. This is Art Month, 365 days of the year. Yes, we're going to celebrate. That's important. So here's my question to you in particular. You talked about how you had to sneak into the White House to take those photographs. Well, in the, in the Oval Office. In the Oval Office. Okay, okay but um, my question is, how do you get to do that? How do you navigate, especially when there's Secret Service for um, people and detailed people, how do you go about doing that? Because the when you're in that, like in the, in the, the, hacks, go with in, the <laughs> in the Brady Press Room, everybody there has been, you know, could you, uh, I mean, researched or whatever. Right, right. They, us, they know you. Right. Yeah, they've right. been vetted. When you first they've come in, been vetted. When you first come in, they take our license and they just, yeah. just sit there for a minute. They've like, been vetted. If they and, have anything uh, on you, you're not going in. But going in the Oval Office, I was not supposed to be in there. And one of the press secretaries, he just let me slide three times. Now, I'm going to tell you, the one, no, he was white. Now, I'm going to tell you. The one time that I got stopped, it was a sister. It was, it was a sister. When I got to the door, who you with? I said, uh, Essex time. You're not on my list. I'm like, okay, all right. What you got? All right, folks. I just wanted to uh, give one more quick disclaimer just regarding the parking lot, 815 for anyone who may need it. Park, right? um, what, straight across the street? Well, no, you're not in yeah, the if you're That's in the parking lot in the uh, eight Bears Eagles. So the 815 closure. Hurst. 
Real, but, thank you, my brother. Real quick, real quick, on, on something here, real quick. This picture is up here. This is from school that we shot. There was 20 feet of water in there. This picture here is the first time, uh, excuse me, we're working here? We work here. Thank you, man. Call her on the phone. Thank you, man. All right, bro. <laughs> See you later, man. I'm joking. All right. This picture here, this is the first time ESPN did an article on New Orleans. And all these 10 pictures here are our pictures in that first magazine that was in this paper. And how we got in there, Brother Dave right here. He works. He's a writer. Let me say, ward, ward winner, <laughs> a writer, and got us in there. So, Dave, real quick, I still... Doug and I, we said we appreciate you because if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have been there. Yeah. You know I love you as a brother. You are my brother. I appreciate you. And here's something for you. We said we're going to give this to you because this is in our book. This is your print right here for you. You can't get it. It's in, it's in, it's in the magazine. That was for you to say we, we love you. We want to give that to you because without you, we got paid well. So I'm just going to give you a picture. That's it. <laughs> you nothing else but a picture. So we were in for that. But you got something? Okay. Come on, man. So we, time. we may have time. Yeah, I've got one, two, third. So uh, start with this gentleman here. Um, what these the kids are doing these days are or they're doing what's called uh, giving guys giving people their flowers. Right. And for the twenty almost twenty years that I've been doing photography, you were partially responsible for that. Good. So I would like to give you guys both your flowers because without you, I wouldn't know most of what I know now. So I want to appreciate you and say, say thank you for, for putting me under your wing and helping me get to where I am photography-wise. I appreciate, wise. That, I, pre I appreciate yeah. you. Hey, um, it's hard getting under his wing, so, right? <laughs> right, but, Keith? But, but what, I'm, what I will also say is, what you mentioned to the young man here about um, learning. I didn't know that it was going to be the type of process that it was, but watching you work and having to trail alongside you and behind you and around you made me yeah. a million times better than I thought yeah. I'd ever be. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, my so brother. I appreciate you. Yeah. I appreciate you. And I'll tell you real quick, it's hard to work with me. I am so particular on certain things, certain shots. If you work, she tried to work with me, it's hard. Doug, that's how Doug got started. He got started working with me. Hey, man, I, I want to shoot with you. All right, come on. And one day we was doing a wedding real quick. We shoot the wedding. And I'm like, where the guys got? I went, they all, it's three of them sitting there eating. Guys, what are y'all doing eating? I'm yelling at them. Well, we can't eat? No, because the bride's out there and nobody's watching them. One could come in, two could come in, then you switch up and then you're going out. Nobody's watching the bride. So now we starve when I starve when I'm ready. I try to starve them to death. Now, one, one more thing. Go get us this. I have to, I have to share this story. I can't leave without sharing this story. So everyone who knows my cousin knows that he's a comedian. That's right? my cousin. <laughs> And this one particular time, now I, I love boxing. That's one of the sports. Yeah, speak up. We're trying to get out of here. This story got here. So he told me he was going to shoot for Roy, Roy Jones. I said, You play too much. <laughs> Stop playing. You ain't shooting for no Roy Jones. So I happened to be watching the fight. Right? Me and Dee Dee at the office restaurant I said, Oh, shit. <laughs> That's my cousin. <laughs> On TV, see? <laughs> Everybody, when I, when I would shoot with Roy, I would shoot the fights. The fights, boom, shoot. But what I would do to get on TV, because we knew where the cameras were, I would always get back in the ring and I'll stand behind him. So I can see the monitor. So I'm like, moving to the side. I see the guy switch over. I move it. So people will see me. Hey, I see you in the ring with Roy. What are you, his bodyguard? I said, no, I'm his photographer. <laughs> so... You got to know where the camera is to get on TV. So people respect you in a different way to see you in a different place, in a different light. One more thing for you guys. We want to say thank you to the library. We really appreciate you having us out. Absolutely. Dale, you know, we Dale, go back. Dale, my brother there, guy that's yeah, doing the, the, the film. Guys. Good job. One more thing. We came out. We, we love you guys for having us. They've been trying to get us here for a while. But we've been busy. They've been trying, trying. So we said we come this time. And I'm glad we did. Now, y'all two come up a minute. Dell and uh, you know your name. Come on up here. Dell, come, come here. Dell, we go back long. We went to school together. Both of y'all, this is Dell. Not you. you. You can stay where you're at. You good. 
All right, so Doug and I, we decide it's, it's one, we wanted to give something and donate it to the uh, library. So the picture right there, that horn, we're gonna donate that to the library. This, mm -hmm. this, this shot here was shot in a school. I mean, no lights, all those pictures, no lights. That's available, like, but how the rain came up or the storm came in and landed just exactly. Everything you see, nobody's touched yeah. it. We haven't touched it. And that's how it is. Now, the other pictures from New Orleans, you got it. Oh, well, that's just the time. The insert from though the ESPN magazine was in the Times Picayune, the New Orleans paper on uh, which anniversary? The 10th anniversary, the 10th. I think. And uh, so we had those frames. Had so those guys, frames. so that's for you guys. I appreciate you guys. Don't talk. Thanks. I'm still talking. Don't talk. <laughs> I see you take it too long. <laughs> so a lot of times I'm joking, but I went really, really guys, family, friends, even the mayor. Mayor and I have been friends for so long. And we, we both of us run the karate school. I haven't been there a while since I've been hurt. We run the karate school together, take care of kids. That's our life. Daryl here, all our friends. Where's my other cousins? Cousin, cousin, cousin. She left. She snuck. Oh, this year. That, that's, that's my heart there. My other brother there that's been there. And my partner here, this guy's here. I work with them. And they came out to support us. They're photographers. Yeah. And my beautiful wife, my sister-in-law, who's married to the mayor, my brother, and my baby girl, my daughter over here. And my, my dad, my aunt, and my cousin, Eric Payne, over there. Hey, Dawn. So we really appreciate you guys. Thanks for coming.